This is the intro jingle. This is the K-Pop DevOps Show with Eric Nam. Ooh. Ladies and welcome to the show. This is K-Pop DevOps with Eric Nam. And today we have a very special guest. We have a catching up episode with our good friend, Miss Amber Lou. Hello. Hello, Eric. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you too. I saw you yesterday too, <laughs> I know, technically. I saw you yesterday. We had a really long shoot it day, was but a it was great. Long day. But it was great. Very long day. Yeah. Hey, I love spending time with you, know, you. Not actually, no, I don't like spending time with you. I like spending <laughs> time with our friends. <laughs> Amber came in for that and we're now doing a podcast. Yeah. So thanks for making time. No. I know you're like super hey, busy. Anything for you. Let's yeah, let's here. talk about you. Yeah. You're here. Okay. Yes. We're here. Yes. Um, first of all, congratulations. No. For, Congratulations. For multiple. Con- Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> for multiple things. <laughs> um, you are now finished with the contract with SM. You are mm-hmm. an independent artist. Yes. So first of all, congratulations Thank on you. being done with the contract. That was a uh, long, yeah. long period of time. Yes. 10, 11 years? Oh uh, yeah, 10, 11 years. That's a yeah. long ass time. Thank you. And you're done. I'm done. Yes. Yeah. How did it feel to be finally done with that contract? No, I honestly, it was, it was a, it's a really hard decision because, you know, like, SM, like, that's where I started. Right. And, you know, I, I love the girls, um, uh, the FX girls and all the friends and the, you know, really, really, the bonds that I've made um, throughout the years. And, you know, I, it was, it was, you know, I kept going back and forth for mm-hmm. like in the past couple of years. Yeah. Because I honestly I didn't know what I wanted. Yeah. And I didn't want to leave the fam. But, you know, I think I as I was growing up, I think my goals just kind of shifted. And, you know, now that I'm older in Korea, I'm 29 now. Woo! <laughs> so, you know, and then the new generation of um of, you know, idols. Idols and these like these these kids are just so talented. I'm just like, I'm old and I have trouble walking. <laughs> it's a lie. You're so, still so fit and active. Uh, you are trying, like trying. The Nike spokeswoman. <laughs> like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. I'm I'm just trying. And yeah, so it's just kind of like I didn't know what to do. And I think after a long time of thinking and, you know, talking with a lot of people, I just kind of felt like I wanted to just explore me as a person yeah and I think it was time for me to kind of step back from that kind of spotlight you know I you know there's so many things that like I miss with the girls like you know we practice together it's like in you know I'm pretty sure as a solo artist you know this too it's like it's kind of lonely yeah kind of scared like we have our people around us but you know on stage it's just eyes on us right and uh you know it's just kind of it's kind of, it's a little it's 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 a little it's different it's a little sad it's a little lonely but um you know I I actually just came back from uh, having coffee with Crystal so yeah you know we 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 still all keep in touch I think we keep in touch actually a lot more now now that you're not yeah. officially working yeah. together yeah right so but I think there there definitely is going to be a day where we might come back together mm-hmm. who knows but as for now I think we're just like yo just do your thing right 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 here's a question actually I think yeah. I personally as a fan of FX. Mm-hmm. I always had wanted to see more FX. Yeah. And I think a lot of fans were like, why is not why isn't there more? Yeah. And I don't know if there's like a proper answer for that or mm-hmm. anything, but like what what do you think? Why do you think there was not more FX? Hmm. There are so many moving parts, mm. especially even if you're in the same company, same group have like the same managers. There's still so many moving parts. Right. Like even if I wanted to do it, you know, someone else might not want to do it. Right. Not to say that that was the situation. I'm just saying that like, you know, you have to have a, like a unanimous decision together. And then also there's the company, the label, the managers. Like there are so many people that have to green light a single project. But, uh, you know, I just want to let the fans know and let you know, like, you know, our hearts, um, me and the bandmates, all our hearts have always been like, let's do FX. Right. Let's do FX. And um, I think when, you know, when we feel like it's the right time and the business is okay as well, um, I think we'll, we'll we'll figure it out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I, I think that's, you know, a very valid point. I think um, the other thing is FX is a group where every individual member… Mm-hmm. Always had something going on. Yeah. For herself as well. Yeah. Like a lot of groups. 
uh, they just try to keep them locked down so everybody just moves mm-hmm. as one. Yeah. But you guys were that group where like you're always yeah. doing like a lot of yenning. Yeah. A lot of reality shows and your solo stuff. Yeah. Crystal was doing a lot of acting and modeling yeah. and like all this other… Luna was always doing musicals. Like it, people yeah. were just busy. Yeah. Victoria wasn't even in the country. Yeah. She's always she's shooting always dramas shooting every- in China. Yeah. So um, yeah. I think for, for people who don't know you guys as well… Yeah. Uh, it might have been like why aren't they doing it? But just to make it very clear… FX is not broken up. There you go. It is not broken up. We are still together. We will always be together. Just know that. Remember that. All our muse out there. We love you. Go ahead and tattoo that on your left arm. Please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you really want to. Then I can't stop you. But if you want to. Um, do you have a favorite FX song? So I I always forget that I love this song. And… Crystal actually texted me while I was in the States. And she was like, I love this song. And I'm like, wait, I love this song too. Um, but I've always said like uh, in the Pink Tape album, there's a song called Airplane. Super dope. I love that song. Mm-hmm. Um, but in our Four, wall, wall, yeah, four, hours, four, hour. four Walls album, um, there's a song called Rude Love. Rude Love. Okay. Rude Love is a bop. Um, I think I think vocally, not to toot my own horn, but me and the girls, we all sound great in uh-huh. it. And when we performed it like at our concert, it was like really high energy. Okay. So um, that I think honestly, dude, the Four Walls album is just solid. Sorry, guys, it's just solid. Just it's just <laughs> solid. All it's the a- writers out there, the producer, you know, as some good job, good job. Great album, great album. And girl, us too. Good, good job. job. Yeah, Pat. Good pat, job, girls. Yeah, patting myself right now. Yes. Good job, girls. You guys killed it. You guys killed it. <laughs> um, so let's go a little bit before SM. You mm-hmm. grew up and you were born in LA. Yes. And then you came to Korea when you were how old? 15. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Was that crazy to you? Do you remember those days? Yeah. That's already like 14 years ago. Or so. 13? Yeah. Wow. It's like almost like half my life. Yeah. Almost. Isn't that insane? Wow. Yeah. Like and you have, we have to say that like when you came here… There weren't a lot of international people here yeah. either. Especially in music. It was probably FX like you and Victoria probably yeah. the only… Like Chinese. Yeah. One of the very few. Yeah. And then it was only after that was like… There was Faye and… Yeah. And Gia, Gia. and Miss A. Yeah. Um, I miss them. Yeah. I actually saw Gia in Shanghai when I was… Uh, uh, when I was performing there in September. Oh okay. And we just were like… Like… Oh you haven't changed. Like you haven't changed either. <laughs> <laughs> we're just always stupid. But yeah like… It was really… Really… I, I want to say that… You know… It was hard. Back then because there weren't as many like foreigners. Mm -hmm. Um, But they're definitely like I I um, you know when you meet the generation before us. um, I even like talked with a Boa. So Boa the Nuna. The queen Mm -hmm. of all K-pop. Yes. Stand the queen. Um, When she would even talk about the industry when she debuted. It's like whoa. How did you survive that? So you know… Like I think even though I think that I had a hard time, you know, I wonder what the generation right now after us, like you're, I'm pretty sure even your your quote unquote line of right of you know music, there was definitely your own like struggles because yeah. I feel like with up to like I think up to FX maybe like 2000 like like 11 12 mm-hmm. the internet wasn't like. Like as pop, huge. It, yeah. As huge. And then I think when you debuted, that's when all these things were happening with like survival shows and stuff. And then right. um, when I talk with a lot of the other my other juniors, they have like a whole set of different problems. So I'm uh-huh. just like, wow, this is kind of crazy. Yeah. This is, but then again, I'm like, oh, this is life. Yeah. Life life is hard. Life but, uh, is hard. But yeah, sorry. So that tangent off into some really weird stuff. But um yeah, it was it was it was really interesting because there wasn't a lot of foreigners here. And um, yeah, it did feel a little lonely here and there. Yeah. But uh, just to sugarcoat it. But I think what's so cool about now is that… Uh, I don't know. I, I don't want… Again, I don't want to toot my own horn. But I always told myself… I think when I get older… And as I get older, I want to create a community mm-hmm. of, of… You know… It, to say if like… If one friend didn't have a place to go. Mm-hmm. Because you know, they didn't… They weren't from Korea. They didn't want to go back to their dorm or something. Like yeah. maybe I can open up my place as a safe haven. Right. You know. And you know that's when I like 
met like Peniel and uh-huh. you know I met you and yeah. I met like Ailey and I, and like I think that community just slowly just started to like grow and grow and grow mm-hmm. and then now um, oh yeah James too Jay- oh James oh, James, I miss, yeah. I miss James. Um, but yeah like it's grown and like I every time I come back to Korea because for the past two years I've been really back and forth half right. half um, I'm slowly seeing that like who I introduced to who, they have been hanging out and they mm. have been like, you know, getting closer. And it's really just like, I'm just like, oh, I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're one of those yeah. few people who are really, really like very open with yeah. the people that you mm-hmm. like and you care about. Yeah. You're, you don't, uh, you don't, what do you say? Akyo. How do you say like, you don't, I don't, you really don't hold, hold back. back. You don't hold back when it comes to like giving. Or opening up. Like I feel like… Uh, it was always astounding to me that like you… Like people are always at your house. Yeah. Just like random people. Like, I'm sure they're your great friends. Yeah. But I'm just like… <laughs> who are these people? But you have so many friends who… Just even aren't celebrities. Yeah. Who live in Korea. But like mm-hmm. you've taken them under your wing. To just like mm-hmm. help them assimilate. And to get used to Korean yeah. life and culture. Introduce yeah. them to people. That's like an incredible uh, skill. And a very generous thing for you to be doing. No. Because oh, cool. uh, honestly, I don't got the patience for that. <laughs> like, I wish I could. I just, I'm just like, I don't know. I, I just think like, for me, I because I know that feeling of how it feels to be alone. Yeah. I don't like. I it's like this. You know, there's some people that are like, you know, you need to go through the same thing that I went through to, to learn. Mm-hmm. I still feel like, in some ways, teaching someone. Uh, like to like teaching someone to experience something can be different and be like supported with love. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like like because when I was here alone, I had no one to talk to. Yeah, like because no one would understand. And like I was obviously really young, and my like my peers were also really young, yeah. so we would obviously not know what the hell we're doing. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, luckily I was able to meet some people. I met a lot, also a lot of bad people, and you know. After going through all that, I'm like, if I were to meet someone that's younger than me or like that's new, why why make them go through all of that crazy like mental like war? Yeah. I, 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 sorry, I don't even know the word to say. Like that that craziness to make them find the answer that I can just tell them right now. Right. Because like it's not like like, hey, this is the answer. Here you go. It's more like, hey, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. And for right now, this is what works for me. Just keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. And I think that direction is very, very helpful because, you know, it's it does save a lot of time and heartache to just be all like, hey, this is what happens. It's also going to be really, really hard. But also know that there's this, this, and this option for you to, you know, have a solution. Right. You know. Right. No, I, I, that's, I think that's great. I think it's, um, because I remember you would introduce me to some people. And then at some point they'd be gone. Yeah. And then I'm yeah. like, what happened to that uh, person? Yeah, and, those... and like, I wouldn't say anything. Yeah, of course. Just because yeah. I'm introducing, you're introducing me to them as your friend. Yeah. But then I'm like, oh, I got a little weird vibes. Yeah. And then you're like, that person was a Bye bye. Yeah. Well, my my whole philosophy with you know people that screw you over or you know that take advantage of you, you have like you have two things. You're gonna feel obviously angry, and then you can, but you can also feel like, oh, I learned something, and I try to always control my temper and my anger and my like, you know, my 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 hateful like revengeness or whatever you want to call it. And I was like, no. I learned something. I know to… I know I can't avoid this. Because people are people. In the end, everybody's trying to grind. Everybody's trying to make something work. And you know, I don't… I could hold on to the hate and never forgive them. And like, and just like cut them out of my life. But to be really honest, I'm just at a place of like… I'm pretty sure you had your reasons. I know you're not going to tell me. You know, I pity some of those people. Um, because Eric, you know this too. If you're just straight up with me, if you make a huge mistake, like and you like you hurt me, I'm just like, hey, 
It's going to take time for us to like, you know, get that trust back. But I'm open to it as long mm-hmm. as we're trying. Mm-hmm. You know, and say for me, like I, when I make a mistake, I, w- I would hope that whoever I hurt would give me that second chance mm-hmm. as well. Because in the end, we're all human. We all make mistakes. And dude, we're dumb kids. <laughs> dude, again, I came here when I was 15. I spent my, 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 the last of my high school years, my early 20s and mid 20s all here. Yeah. Of course I'm going to make mistakes. Of course I'm going to be stupid. Of right. course I'm going to act a fool. Right. But I don't think that it's a… I've seen a lot of people just get screwed over so badly. And they're just hurt by it forever. And it's just like… Man… And it, and it ends up killing their potential. Mm-hmm. And it, that's what I think sucks. Right. And that's why… You know… And honestly sometimes my positivity could be a little bit overboard. Mm-hmm. But I'd rather be positive than negative about a situation. That's fair. That's fair. Um, so I mean… You know you got here. You're very… I guess lonely for some… Some bits of it, mm-hmm. I guess. Um, you have a good community of friends here. Mm-hmm. What was it like, I guess, recently, kind of over the past few years, kind of resettling back into LA, mm-hmm. um, where you had been lived for over 10 years, yeah. right? So you're going back. Um, this is a personal fear of mine. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know when, if, or how, like, what my career looks like, but I'm pretty sure at some point I'll probably have to work a lot more in the States. Yeah. And um, spend a lot more time there. And one thing for me is like… I know that when I have to move over there… I'm nervous that I have to make new friends. Mm -hmm. I have to live in a new city. Mm -hmm. I have to make a new life. Mm -hmm. In many ways. A new community. Yeah. Yeah. It's not comfortable. It's not easy. Yeah. How is that like for you? I think… Instead of like thinking of it as me starting over, like, because, you know, I have all my, like, my high school best friends still there, mm-hmm. you know, like my, my, one of my childhood friends uh, who actually like writes with me and produces with me, he still lives there, you know. I, have my, I had my sister there. She just moved to Denver, but, uh, you know, my sister was there. I have, I have a good, like, good community of friends there. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think I, for a time, I was extremely scared of everything. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to meet people, I wanna stay home, you know. Though, People think I am very, very outgoing. Again, people are all at my house. I don't leave my house. I never leave my house. People are going to you. <laughs> to me. You come to me. I don't go to you. Uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, I, I have to really just thank my friends for kind of just babysitting me. Like in like holding my hand throughout that whole time. I was really scared. But uh, definitely having them with me the whole time… Uh, really, I think, cushioned like mm-hmm. all the blows of all the bad thing that's happened. Because yeah, there's there's so much drama. Dude, drama is everywhere. I think <laughs> once you just realize drama is everywhere. Drama is life. You just kind of like, huh, okay, yeah. well, whatever. And I, I, I don't know. I, I, my parents are there too, still. So um, you know, just kind of like going back to where I grew up. It's very nostalgic and I just like am so like I'm way more appreciative of you know of my childhood mm-hmm. now that like I'm able to go back I'm like wow I used to like hate this place I just think it was so boring but I think it's a really nice neighborhood now <laughs> <laughs> So kind of you know just not wasting my time on worrying about it and that's just like just for you like I still do worry about it. I'm always… I'm still scared. Yeah. But to kind of just rewire myself and be like, nah, I shouldn't waste my time worrying about this. I'm just gonna take a deep breath, start the day, and see. let's just see what happens. You know? So yeah. Now that you're independent, mm-hmm. you have been putting out… I guess even before you were independent, yeah. you put out mixtape. Yeah. Right? Um, you went on tour, and then you just recently put out X. Yes. That was in what? September? Yeah. I start, it started in December. And then um, there's six songs. Uh, and they… I think… Oh no. When, by the time this podcast is out, they're all out. So How many songs? songs? Six songs. Okay. Um, total. All right. Yeah. Total. Um, the last one, uh, Stay Calm, released uh, yeah, January 8th, I think. I think. I might be wrong, but… Two questions. Yes. Well, okay. if you yeah. guys don't know, Amber edits all of her own stuff. Like literally she directs… <laughs> That's your phone. Has my phone dropped? <laughs> she, well, <laughs> she literally directs and edits all of her own videos, which is insane. No, no. like that's I don't know how you do that. 
You also write all your own music. You write the lyrics and you write the melodies. Do you do production as well? Uh, I have more input. Okay, yeah. Rather than doing I don't anything. touch that stuff. I don't click buttons. I don't like that. <laughs> um, but that's a lot of work to put on yourself. Yeah. But with X, what was the goal? What's the message? Mm-hmm. What does it mean to you? So backtracking a little bit from the mixtape, I had a lot of theories in my head. on the, And I also had like a lot of curiosity on like different processes and creating mm-hmm. art. And I, with, you know, the little money that I had, I was just like, I'm going to just try, you know. And like all the people that were involved in the mixtape, you know, they were they were just so kind. And it was just a really fun, creative, like, just situation. And then with X, what I wanted to do is now that I actually, I've, I have some money, <laughs> I have some backing now, and I'm going to, and I can just do a little bit more. I wanted to kind of upgrade yeah. that. And… One of my managers were like, you want to do a video for every song? And I'm all like, yes. And they're all like, you're going to get burnt out. And I don't think you should do it. Maybe just do three. And I'm like, nope, I'm going to do six. Wow. And it ended up turning into like eight because we have like different versions of right. certain um, songs. Uh, I am very burnt out, by the way. <laughs> but it was a lesson that I wanted to, that I needed to learn. Um, on your own. Yeah. On my own. And, uh, you know. I don't know. Maybe I, I do say that now, but maybe the next album I might do the same thing. I don't know. Oh man! But I don't know. I I just love storytelling. I think uh-huh. rather than I love music, like with a passion. Um, I do love video, uh, videos and movies and uh, just filmmaking in general. But I think that whole process of taking what uh, you know I wrote about. And then putting it onto, you know, actual an actual like screen. Right. It's just that I don't know, there's a rush that you get. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my gosh, I've actually like it's coming together. It's it's like real now. Yeah. Uh so I don't know. I I'm it's honestly just all adrenaline and just happy vibes. I really, really just hate being on set and not being in a good mood. Mm. So What's oh like and um my my video team uplifted visuals are like they're, they're, okay so I, yeah I do a lot of things but there's two guys um, David and Alan Alan is just like he's always just like getting the short end of everything because I'm yelling at him half the oh. time and I'm like Alan do this Alan get this angle Alan no cut off the tail and then extend the head a little bit to this clip and then put that three seconds and cut four frames off of this one director Amber yeah <laughs> and then David is the producer and he's always like and I'm like David just get this and this and this but I love you <laughs> I always try to you know when I'm you know I do get really flustered easily uh-huh. but I always try to catch myself and be like but I love you guys Right. Please know that I love you guys. And I'm sorry. But I love you. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, they've gone through a lot with me. So we actually had to give one of the videos to one of my mentors. And we actually… Um, the, the kissing video. The one that you saw. Oh my god, other people. dude. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. But Brad Wong is like one of my uh, my mentors uh-huh. right now. And he's really like… Uh, we actually meshed two ideas together. Like my idea and his idea together. And made um, other people. But David and Alan were like, Thank you for not… Giving us one right. more video. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot yeah. of work. I still don't know how you, how you do it. Was there like a story that you told through X that you're t- telling so, through it, or is it all like yeah. individually just different songs? So X is literally just like a a, a, a uh, I don't know. It's like a I like to I like I like to call it um a, just a mesh of like my past because there's no like genre that I stick to. Hmm. Uh, I literally just write what I feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the songs, I think from the time like maybe the first song was written to the, like, the last one was I think maybe like four or five years. Oh wow. So um, there were actually a lot of songs like in, you know, in the, t- in the what do you call it? In the tank? In the, in the vault? There yes. In the vault. But um, I think those represented it. Like, represented it? Represented the, I think the the most like Turn the most monument. I cannot speak English today. The monumental. The yeah, the most the landmark. The, la- the landmarks of like the most pivotal. There we okay. go. English words, <laughs> dictionary. <laughs> the most pivotal points in my life. So you know, hands behind my back was just like a time I was like, you know, people are gonna like keep me from doing what I want to do, and they're gonna tie m- my hands behind my back and you know do that. Then they don't know what I'm doing behind their my back. Uh-huh. So that's that's their fault. You know, other people I just got through a big, big breakup. And, you know, I 
I was just so screwed up after the breakup. I was mm-hmm. really bad. I was… I don't… Honestly, you guys, I, I know we talked about me drinking earlier. I actually don't drink a lot. Yeah, I, I, I know you don't. I don't drink a lot. I've maybe seen you once yeah. in my life drunk. And I think the first time that… Like, it was the first time like after the breakup, I started drinking alone. Uh, and that screwed me up. That's not good. Yeah, that screwed me up a lot. Yeah. Uh, and I was just like making bad choices. And um, I think there was… I, I decided to open up to one of my friends about it. And I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And um, and it's kind of like… I, I, really, I, I really lost myself, I mm-hmm. think, through that relationship. And uh, what my friend uh, helped me do was just like, Hey, whatever you want to do, I'll do it with you. So we would work out together. We would uh, go take dance lessons together. We would, So we would basically just… We were just helping each other. <laughs> the funny thing, my friend just got going through a breakup too. Oh no! So we were both screwed up. <laughs> just really like bad. Yeah. So, um, so I just really wanted to write a song about like… I'm going to replace every negative thing I feel with something positive. Mm-hmm. And even if it's just for that moment just to numb the pain, I'm going to try. Mm. And get over, you know… Me being lost. Yeah. And that's how you and Mike started breaking <laughs> out. <laughs> okay. And scarring me and Ailey. <laughs> okay. The thing is… Is that the original script before I gave it to my mentor was way worse. Wh- what were you It was going thinking? to be with multiple guys… Man. With way steamier scenes. You were just going to be mad, mad yeah. hookup Amber. Yeah. I was gonna say something else, but it was it's, PG. Like the the original script was actually very, very um it's very hypocritical. Mm-hmm. It's because it's not that it's what I am doing, it's what I wanted to do. Oh uh, okay. you know? so it's like all imagination. imagination. Kind of thing. Yeah, and like the the video now um is it does have that because I don't to it, yeah. Okay, spoiler alert. If you guys have not watched the other people music video, uh she pause sucks here. face. <laughs> like pause the video right now and go watch it and then come back. It was shocking. Yeah. <laughs> I literally… Okay. Let me set the tone for you guys. People have seen this reaction. Hey, I didn't really realize that you were filming us doing it. And then I saw it and I laughed out loud. But we… Amber, Ailey, and I… We just happened to be in LA at the same mm-hmm. time. Like none of us planned it. Yeah. But Amber and Ailey were going to have lunch. And I was like, I'll, I'll drop by for like… I think like 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. I got to go. And Amber goes, Hey, do you want to see my new music video? And we're watching it. And… I screamed. I think I screamed like a little schoolgirl. <laughs> and Amber and Ailey was just like, I don't even know. She was like, Amber? Yeah. Amber. It was wild. And not only was there a lot of kissing and tongue, there was a lot of like touching boob g- grabbage on the man. <laughs> like you like felt him up. And I was like, yeah, this is like that a happened. very sexual video. Yeah. All to say. If you're into it, you're into it. Yeah. We were just not ready. Yeah. And like the thing was is that like when I put that scene in… Like whether it's the old script or like the the, the video that it is now… It was literally what I wanted to do. Because I wanted to like make my ex so jealous that I was with somebody uh. else. Or like you know maybe if I felt like something with somebody else… Maybe you know I'll get over it's it. It's a sign that you're moving on. Yeah. But you know, I I didn't suck someone's face. Don't worry. Like I, in real life, like <laughs> no, not like other than the video. <laughs> like, like really, Wait, what? We're gonna make a tagline called "Amber sucks <laughs> face." <laughs> but yeah, um, but the the the, the okay. Spoil again. Spoiler alert. Like the whole thing is that the whole scenario and all that stuff was all in my head. Mm, you know, right? Uh, and I wanted to do all these things to make my ex jealous. Right. But you know, yeah, and. Yeah, that happened. And then, segue, curiosity happens. Which like, I actually want to try to meet somebody. I want to actually, like, I've been so calculative when I meet somebody. Like, I never really casually dated. And I think it's because I'm so conservative. Like, with like, okay, if I'm going to meet you, I want to marry you. Like, if I'm going to date you, it means I want to marry you. But I'm, I'm kind of like at a place where I'm like, maybe I should just date around. Like, right. I'll, I'll, I'll control the butterflies a little bit, you know. And just kind of like see if I just want to… If I like somebody… Let's just see where it goes. Mm -hmm. And like not have any expectations. Right. Uh, Still figuring that out. But oh well. (laughs) I mean look. It's… You know aside from maybe that being your personality… I think another part of it is that you grew up in a K-pop system for more than 10 years. Yeah. Dating is very very secretive. It's like 
you're paranoid all the yeah. time about dating. And so when when you make a commitment to date somebody, there's yeah. so much more that goes into it than yeah. a normal not I don't want to say normal, just like a non public figure's mm-hmm. dating life. And so for a lot of people they're just like, what? That's yeah. not that doesn't make sense. But for people who are living a different life yeah. like we are, it, it yeah. it's a different experience. Yeah, and it was like crazy because like uh when I I've dated, you know, I've dated a celebrity before and I've dated, you know, people that weren't in the industry and it's it's very it's very different. Mm-hmm. And um like with with the with me dating with the celebrities, it's just like kind of like okay, like we we both know what we're getting into and we're both willing to take that burden on. But when I was dating somebody that was, you know, not in the industry, uh you know, though, you know, during the first like couple months of dating, like we were we were good and like they're like, "Okay, no, yeah, I'm going to I'm willing to take on the 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 pressure and all that and blah 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 blah." It's still like I think later on, like the reason why you know we, what we broke up was just because I think they couldn't handle it. Right, so it's hard. It just sucks, it, and it's not and easy. I don't blame them. I really don't. Yeah, and I don't I don't ever want to force someone to take that burden on. Right, for me, because, fair enough. Because you know this job is my choice. Fair enough. And I, you know, yeah, me and Eric oh. have a marriage pact. <laughs> Look, <laughs> actually, no, Eric has like a marriage pact with so many people. People just… I'm like insurance for mad people. They're just like, look… Hey, me and Eric's marriage is strictly for business. <laughs> We're just like… <laughs> I was just… I can't say this. I can't say this out loud. It's fine. We'll, we'll go over it. <laughs> I was going to say something. I was like, no, stop, shut anyway. up. Shut up. Don't say anything. Anyways. Yeah. Um, okay. So you have this new… Is it you call it EP, I guess? It's an EP, yeah. Right. What's next? You're on tour… Yeah. So uh yeah, all the all the songs are out. We have what we talked about curiosity. So there's numb, ready for the ride, stay calm all came out. Um check those out if you can, mm-hmm. please. <laughs> um I'm on by the time this is airing, I'm I am on tour right now, right. tour X. Uh and uh yeah, we're just having fun. We got the we got the band back together mm-hmm. and uh we just I don't know, I I I enjoy tour the most. I'm pretty sure you're the same too. Like touring is like the most fun. It's fun. And you know you gotta meet the fans face to face. You're really like you're like 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 two feet away from them, right? And uh and and it's really really, I guess satisfying, to see that there were actually people in place that you've never been to that were fans of you, right? You know my my first tour, uh, the Gone Rogue tour, which was in 2018, I never like I. I never went to, I never went to Chicago before. And that was my first show. Mm. And to see that there were like it was like almost a full house. I was like I've never been here, but there's people that like me. They love me. <laughs> what do you, what city are you most excited about this time? Uh to be honest, Atlanta. Your yeah. hometown. Yeah, cuz like I've you 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 talk about Atlanta so much and I'm mm. just like I really want to go. It's it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Uh, there's not actually Atlanta's there's not much to do. But it's just like a comfortable place to live. I just honestly just really want to go to that show and just like talk a bunch of smack about you. <laughs> <laughs> um. So what what are you planning for after? Are you going to take a break? Uh, we're me and the team are trying to get a the, the an actual world tour set up. Um, we're working on that. It's just a you know I have a lot of things on the back end in the works. So couple I've been doing a lot of auditions. For film, for, TV, for, for acting. Okay. Um, had a couple close calls, but dang it, it's okay. It's it'll okay. Come. It'll, it'll come. come. It'll come. Uh, and uh, yeah, just trying to figure out where everything is gonna go. And I'm also right, even right now, working on my LP. Oh wow! So another album. Uh, I just always have songs, though. You know. Yeah. There's always what, songs. I got a question for you. What scares you? Because, and I say that because I feel like you're an incredibly how do I say this? Not only are you a hard worker, you're also passionate and you're also very mm-hmm. courageous in terms of how you approach things. And I say that because there aren't many people who leave a system that's as structured as a place mm-hmm. like SM mm-hmm. and stay driven and motivated mm-hmm. to just keep pushing through. It's not easy. Yeah. Well, I think first of all, with any like, I think any like a system like SM, um, it's not a bad thing. It definitely works no, for people. It definitely yeah. works for people. Again, we're not like saying it's in a, a negative light. But I think there are so many uh, talented idols out there that 
you know, their work styles just don't match that system. Mm. But I think because we start so young, we only know that system. Right. And I think, not that it scares me, but I think trying something new is scary to people. Right. And for me to, you know, that I made the decision to leave it. I honestly feel a great amount of pressure, especially for, you know, our, like our generation of artists that are like, there's a lot of, like a lot of people that I debut with have like been leaving their companies. Right. And, you know, I definitely see in the comments, oh, now that she's left, she's a flop, not nah, irrelevant, blah, blah, blah. And I, and I see that. And to be really honest, again, there are like, there are so many talented idols out there that mm -hmm. are just so passionate and they're great people and they have the craziest and coolest ideas. And, you know, it just kind of, a lot, but we're just scared. A lot of people are just scared. You know, I think um, a couple of days ago, one of my friends in a, in a really successful idol group right now was, you know, having second thoughts and just like, like, I'm getting older. I don't know what to do. And I was just like, hey, you know, just try. Yeah. The the only thing you can the only way you're gonna find the answers is to try. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're always gonna make mistakes. Right. Again, you know. Right. I think what going back to your question of what my biggest fear is, I think is to let people down, mm. because I I don't I don't need to be a huge star. Mm -hmm. I don't need to be the number one like most secret idol like a person or artist ever or like anybody even memorable like I don't need that all I want to do is literally just set up a platform for the next generation mm -hmm. to hopefully you know have their chance right right that's literally all I want to do because you know I, like I've had the pleasure and the honor of being number one before you know I have an amazing fan base I have all the I, I feel love every day but you know I think it's time for me to give back. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think definitely disappointing people too mm -hmm. is definitely something that I fear very mm -hmm. much. Um, on a lighter note, I'm very scared of bugs. <laughs> Worst bug. Oh, oh, spiders. 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 Scary. Really? Tarantula. Scary. Oh yeah, I don't like those. Yeah. Do you like cockroaches? No, they're fine. They're Okay, it's just spiders. They're kind of cute. They're like, meow, meow, meow. Oh, you know? okay. But yeah, I think, um, you know, whatever, I think whatever comes like, I all I want to do is just I don't want people to feel like in art they have to be number one to be successful. Right. Um, definitely, where I find the most inspiration are people like that actually are, like quote unquote don't have a name. That's where I find a lot of my inspiration yeah. from. But honestly, without them, how would I have been inspired right. to have and then have the platform that I have? I feel like you bring up a great point. I've spoken about this on this show before, but I think one unfortunate thing about working in the K-pop industry is that we have these ridiculous systems of ranking mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Like nobody else in other countries, I don't think, are really ranking mm -hmm. people. Like I think well so th I had a really really interesting conversation with one of my friends um who's also an artist but uh also owns their own company. Oh, okay. So she was saying that she understands that like artists are frustrated mm -hmm. and that you know that they want to do what they want to do but after becoming a ceo she also understands how you have to keep a business afloat right so again for example i'm not going to speak for sm but for example because i i have been in my company there's an overhead you got to pay your employees right. you got to you got to make sure that you guys are on quota guys are you guys in the red or the, uh, the red with green um are you guys on pro projection stockholders like there's right. a lot of things to worry about as a ceo right and in to put sim uh, to put simply you as a business person are just trying to make money used by using the art so of course the art in the business are always going to clash mm -hmm. so i think it's just a it's just a you have to it's when it doesn't match, it has there has to be efforts on both sides to understand to each compromise, other. Yeah, yeah, to compromise. But when there obviously isn't a compromise, then obviously one's gonna be better than the other. Right, right. right. So, I, I get both sides, but um, you know, every artist will have you know their own way of doing things. Every mm -hmm. business will have their own way of doing things. Right. So again, it's like I think 
the K-pop quote the quote unquote K-pop system that it is right now is just so universal here in Korea. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's kind of the only way to do things, but it's changing. Now. Right. It's still it's changing now. You know. Right. That's exciting, and I hope it changes. Yeah. Fast. Progress. We like progression. We like progressiveness here. Progressive. <laughs> We're progressives. Um, okay. So my next question is… I mean we've… I feel like we've done very serious topics. And yeah. we're going to just stay yeah. in that lane. Okay. We might as well. Might as there. well. Might as well. Um, but… And I'm very cautious about bringing this up. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like it's a Don't very shoot. sensitive topic. Mm. But… Um, and we briefly touched on it on this mm-hmm. show a few months ago. Mm-hmm. But… Uh, one of your former bandmates, Soli, mm-hmm. passed away mm-hmm. late last year. How have you been? How did that affect you? Like has that affected your life or how you think about things in any way? There are times when I think that like, you know, I've accepted it. And then uh, even honestly, I, even before I came here, I was going through my 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 phone, my phone for pictures and I came mm-hmm. across one of our old photos and it hits me again. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's been kind of like I guess a battle in that yeah. way, but you know, I've, I'm, I was really silent about it during the whole, the whole, that whole time. Right. It's just like it was. It just came out of nowhere, um, you know. And you know, shortly after that, you know, uh, you know, Hara also you right. know, passed as well. And it's it's been a it's been hard. Yeah. It's it's. It's weird because you know these are people that I like. These two friends that I have, like I, we grew up with, essentially. You know, Hara was actually one of my first friends in the industry as well. Mm-hmm. That was outside of my company, and she, like you know, she took care of me too. Um, you know, and I, I don't know. Like, it's a, it's 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 a it's a process every day, mm-hmm. and um, I've been. I think more willing to share, I guess, my feelings about uh, about this with my friends now these days. Because mm-hmm. you know, I, I th- no, sorry, no. I think for me personally, you know, I don't think I've been very, very open about my. Sh- like, I've been open about my struggles in the way that I am morally like, you know, this is how I am. But uh, I think on a real, real level, I think I've really bottled bottled in a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, because uh, um, apparently, like one of my friends was like, "Hey, like let's talk about it." Like I can see that you're not mm-hmm. like good right now. Yeah, but um, it it's it's hard to talk about. But I think that's I hopefully by me talking about it, I can just bring light to a situation and a problem that goes on mm-hmm. um, in in this world, like everywhere. Yeah, but you know. I, I honestly just help, hope that we can be kind to one in, one another. Yeah, I think it's 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 honestly it's a, like for me to say oh let's just be kind to one another. It's like oh it's it's a, it's simple, but I think that's what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember uh, one of my fans reposting something that I like I wrote like years ago. It's like if we all sing the same melody, how can there be harmony? Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, hmm, good job, Amber. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's to really… I think there's a, a lack of… You know… You know Eric, there's times when me and you don't agree. Mm-hmm. But we're like… We're like, we're fam. I think we are. Talk it through. We are talking through. But like… It's like having this understanding of trying to understand each other. Right. Is I think what's lacking the most these days of what I see with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I am… And of me of course too. Because again, I'm quick to judge as well. Because well, I'm human. Mm-hmm. But to… Catch myself and be like, okay, wait, what's going on? Don't get angry. Let's see what let's, let's see what we can do. Right. Can we talk it out? Right. Is it the right time to talk? I don't know. But um, just to have meaningful conversations and um, uh, you know, just create a an atmosphere of just no judgment is what I really want to do. Because mm-hmm. um, I've I've I remember just kind of being scarred uh, by people that I used to share my problems with. Um, and they would tell me, you shouldn't feel like that. You have everything you want. Mm. You should be happy where you are. Mm-hmm. Don't feel like that. 
Like, you know, like it's like I personally like now that a couple years have passed and um and I'm getting older, I think one thing that I've definitely have realized is that you can't deny someone their emotions. Right. You cannot deny someone their emotions and whether that emotion is right or wrong. But whether if that emotion is right, let's see how we can, you know, how we can cater to it and like let it down slowly. If that emotion is wrong, how do we um number one, love that person? And how do we hopefully let them see a different uh, the other side right but to to learn to be patient is something that i'm always working on right. even with myself because mm-hmm. i'm always beating it like why did i not do this why did i do this why why am i wrong why am i stupid why am i uh, like why am i worthless yeah and i think that's something that everybody goes through mm-hmm. and to realize that you know take it a day at a time take it slow you know i might have these really really dark thoughts right now but let me try to search for a light, mm-hmm. no matter how dim it is. Mm-hmm. I think that's something that um, I hope that uh, people can understand is that I think the world will give you a problem that uh, uh, instead of like uh, burdening yourself with like this problem that you're dealing with, it's to realize like, what can I learn from this? Mm-hmm. What is the world telling me today mm-hmm. that I need to learn? Mm-hmm. And, and just try to find again that no matter how dim it is that light right you know i mean that that's great i think what to kind of summarize what you're trying to say is mm-hmm. a people should just not judge each other and be nice mm-hmm. to each other yeah and b personally on a level it's more of let's try to be as understanding of whatever situation we're mm-hmm. in yeah in a whatever case yeah. and correct me if i'm wrong yeah. but, but that's kind of like the vibe that i'm getting but no i think it's it's uh i agree with you i and i also think it's important and to just even talk about this stuff. Mm-hmm. Because I think when I look at… You know, I've done so many interviews in the past few months. Mm-hmm. And it's an unavoidable question. Yeah. Um, for as big of a force that K-pop is… There are also a lot of like… Yeah. Unfortunate events that happen. Yeah, of course. Um, and so I get asked a lot. And like I personally did not know… Soli or Hara or a lot of these people. Mm-hmm. Um… But I think it's there needs to be a discussion and a dialogue yeah. about being nice to each other yeah. and like mental health yeah. and things. It's it's frustrating because you would think that there should be things set up for these things to change. Yeah. And hopefully this is a a huge wake up call. Yeah. But I mean, I was even reading an article the other day. Somebody who's been covering <coughs> these unfortunate incidents for so long mm-hmm. is just like. It looks like it's going to change. But will it really? And yeah. I want to say yes. Like I want to be mm-hmm. optimistic. I want to say we can get yeah. there. But it's only through yeah. these types of dialogues that we can yeah. kind of… of course. Um, encourage yeah. change as well. So… Yeah. Um, uh, one thing I'd like to add to that is like… You can't like… You know the government or you know… Whoever like… Person can be all like… Well… We'll just stop comments. We'll stop this. Like yeah. that It can help. It can. You know it's… 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 it's, it's a try. But you know… One thing that I really believe in… That I'm I'm still figuring out is that… You know… Well… Why don't we change hearts? Instead of… You know… Instead of hindering someone from trying to do something… It's just more like… How do we change your mind? Mm -hmm. Um, And I… I really feel like… You know… I'm learning to be more honest with myself. Because you know… I think being in the public, we have to always be happy. Mm-hmm. We always have to, you know, be, be smiling and mm-hmm. nothing's wrong. But uh, I even remember like back then when I started writing music and I started giving my demos to the um, to the label, they'd be like, are you okay? I'm like, what? They're like, no, like, you're, you're, like your music's like really sad. I'm like, I'm fine. Like, but… Uh, you know, I'll say flat out right now. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a therapist. You know, mm-hmm. I, I need it, and I think I have a lot of things that I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I want to be open about it is that, like, I'm not afraid and I'm not yeah. ashamed that you I'm should getting it be. Help. Yeah. And I think anybody out there that, you know, needs to talk to somebody, go for it. Yeah. You know, 
you should not be ashamed of you trying to, you know, take care of your mind. Right. If you if you break a bone, you go to see a doctor. Right. If you are thinking bad things or there's something wrong or you don't know how to do something, go go see a therapist. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. And anybody who, you know, thinks that that's weird, you know, I I would really I hope that you can change your mind and see that that it's something that you know a lot of people do need. Right. Um. And I hope that it doesn't it doesn't it's that mental health is not something. Seeking mental, um, seeking to better your mental health is not something that is weird. Yeah. No, I agree. It's not. And I think it's it's a perception thing where I feel like in the States particularly, most of my friends, I'd say more than 50% of my friends, I think have therapists. And it's not always because they have like a condition or anything. Like some people just go to talk. Yeah. Because it helps just yeah. to talk. So, um, yeah. Yeah. One interesting thing that I actually asked my therapist was like, why did you ask me to actually talk with you more, especially when I'm not going through something? Mm. And she was actually saying that when you are calm and you can think mm -hmm. clearly, you are able to talk more clearly mm -hmm. and, th and actually analyze what you're saying. Right. As you talk about it rather than when you're going through a crisis. Yeah, obviously people will go to, um, you know, therapists when, they, when they're going through a crisis. But you're high emotion. You're like not listening. Right. You're just saying things. Right. And then obviously the therapist is going to try to do their best to help resolve that, right. that crisis um, in, uh, that's going on. But when you talk calmly and with a clear head… You can actually understand, oh, you can actually like talk clearly about like your background. And you can dig into things that are very, very… Um, that you would have thought of if you were not thinking clearly. Right. You know, so it's it's very interesting. And um, yeah, you know, it's… I think some… I think everybody… Uh, yeah. Be healthy, please. Yeah. Physically and mentally. Absolutely. I mean, I've said this before. Like, yeah. if you are feeling not in a good place or if you need help like do not hesitate to reach out to people like mm -hmm. e like people some people don't can't afford a therapist but there are people who love you like your family or your friends mm -hmm. like who will listen to you who yeah. even if they don't understand 100% what you're going through they're there to listen to you mm -hmm. and to help you through it as much as possible yes. um but again like thank you for sharing that oh, because oh. It, i think it's it speaks volumes to people who may think that seeing a therapist or you know, talking through it is weird. It's not. If it's you not. think that way, I'm sorry. That's very close-minded of you. Yeah. <laughs> and it's 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 because yeah. and, and you are maybe potentially in a very very lucky situation where you haven't been through horrible or very painful or mm -hmm. uh, situations. But and hopefully you never will. But there are people who have, and it, I, they have every right yeah. to be happy and healthy in mm -hmm. every sense of the word. So. Um, yeah, if you guys yeah. need it, get it. Yes. Absolutely. The world is a really weird, dark, but also light, 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 light. Oh my gosh, I can't even talk right now. <laughs> <laughs> the world is a very, very weird, happy, and sad place. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, you're going to need help. Like, everybody needs help. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've helped me a lot, Eric. You've helped me too. We all help each other. High five. High five. Yes. Um, <laughs> Teamwork. But yeah, thanks for sharing that. I th I think uh, I'm glad to hear that you're you're getting through it. Mm. I couldn't have imagined that it's been easy in any way. Um, but thank you, still trying. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know that I'm here. A lot of you have a yeah. lot of great people yeah. around you. So, um, but yeah, on that note, we should just like talk about something happy. Yeah. Um, what are you listening to recently? Um, I've been obsessed with me. Okay, okay. There, I really like. Was it? Is it Wonder? Oh yeah, you makes, like that makes song. Me, makes, makes me wonder. What, yeah, Wonder. Wonder. It's called Wonder. Okay, yeah. I like that song. Um, I really like Come Through as well. Well, thank you. But who cares about Eric? Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> um, I've actually been listening to a lot of my friends' music these days. So like, um, with Ailey's um. Album. There's a song called Midnight that I love. Uh -huh. Midnight. There's that. Um, my friend Arden had like <laughs> uh, Arden Cho. 
I've been actually like I was in the studio with her, so I've been, I've been actually like researching <laughs> her stuff. So there's one. So I'm actually trying to like also write a lot of, for a lot of other, other people. people. Cool. So you're um, trying to write for art in these days. Yeah, trying. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's going. And this is all the trying, not yet. Um, Red Velvet just came out with some stuff. Yeah. Psycho. Psycho. I love. They're so cute. I love them so much. Oh, Stan Red Velvet, please. Um, so everything, honestly, this has all been friends. Because like everybody's been releasing music. So I'm just like, you know what? Friend playlist party. Perfect. Perfect. So there's Thank you that. for supporting. Yeah. Um, I, I've streamed your album like once. That was it. That's it? <laughs> I Well, I actually can't watch your music video because I'll puke. It's fine. You don't need to watch it. <laughs> uh, people keep sending me like, the like gif, the gif. GIFs. And I'm oh just like, God. I can't. Stop it. You actually had a you had such a dad reaction. I was I was literally I had no idea what was going on. I was like, oh okay. <gasps> that was actually one of like the most like funnest days ever because when we took the stack photo oh, yeah. and I found the old stack photo. Yeah, that was fun. So there's a thing where, you know, me, Ailey, and Eric stack on top like a totem pole kind of thing. And we took a picture that day. It's on my Instagram or is it, is it, is it I think it's on all of ours. I think it's on all of our Instagrams. And then we had one five years ago too. Yeah. I can't believe it's been five years, dude. I know, that's crazy. Dude, wait, how old were, How old was I? I, I was know. 22. So I was 20 like six. Yeah. Wow. Oh, you were young. Oh, gosh. You were so young. I'm an old grandpa. The old grandpa, Eric. <laughs> um, so we have a Discord and we jumped in there for some questions for you. Okay. So we have just a couple. All right. Okay, cool. Shoot. Let's go. Here we go. Um... Uh, well, we did the song. I have a Discord too, actually. You do? That's a… Nihao Jack Jack. How's Jack Jack? Jack Jack is good. He knows Trin Trin now. Trin Trin's like circle. Trin Trin? Trin Trin. Oh, circle, circle. Like circle, circle. So he'll put his nose in the circle. Oh. So he'll go Trin Trin. He go… Hop! And he puts his nose right in like right oh. in, the, in the circle. <laughs> I was going to say something <laughs> bad. Um, let's see. We have… What do you think your pet would name you? Servant. Servant. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because Jack Jack's like… Give me food. Why aren't you holding me? Feed me, human. Do you know I exist? Hey, hello. Like, oh, Attention. you want to roll over to that side of the bed? Then I will take over the middle side of the bed. I'll take over your entire bed. Yeah. All right. It just like crawls on top of you and just sits there. It's dogs. Yeah. That's what they do. Um, these are like really deep. I'm gonna yeah, go no, go ahead. Go ahead. What is the greatest downfall you've ever had? That's oh. really like I don't even the greatest downfall. Wow. Oh, From geeky four hundred. Do you actually really want to know? <laughs> what is my biggest downfall? Wait, like is this like downfall as in like like personality wise or like I don't know experience? Okay, whatever you want to think it is. Okay, how about like, if we're allowed to like edit it a little bit? Uh -huh. Like, what's our biggest kryptonite? How about that? Yeah, let's do that. Um, on a lighter note, gummies. Gummy bears. I will do anything for gummy candy. I think that's. Gummy candies is one thing. Um, number two, I think my biggest kryptonite is… Wow, what is my biggest kryptonite? What's your biggest kryptonite? Oh my god. Oh yeah, germs. I hate germs. You hate germs? I hate germs. There's germs on there right now. I mean, I'm, I'm like… I, will, I wash my hands like 50 times a day. I'm not kidding. My biggest kryptonite I actually found out now. What? When my friends call me to… For a favor uh -huh. or to ask me to do something. And it's like, jump on a plane, <laughs> come to Korea. That's crazy. Who would do that? I don't know. That's insane. That it person was, is that, crazy. Yeah. Eric is my kryptonite. That person <laughs> is just rude. I'm just making the Eric Burr ship sail right now. Uh. <laughs> All right. Uh, last one. Mm -hmm. Something that you've always wanted to do, but you couldn't because of various reasons. But you want to do this from me, banana. Oh, um, two things. I've always wanted to like learn piano and guitar for like the actual music theory. Like I know how to play guitar, like chords and stuff, but like learn it musically. This is why I can't produce. Oh I, yeah, I, me too. Tell I'm me like up. produce a song. Like I, I can do like a like mediocre beat. You could do like, Mary had a little lamb. Yeah. Like I I tr I tried to produce. It's horrible. Like I can't get chords for my life. No, but it's not worth it. So like learning piano and actually music theory, I get it, and I know how to like. Tell a producer like what I want to do, mm -hmm. but to actually do it, like, nah, no. Nah. Okay. Uh, but um, the second thing is actually skydive. You never skydived? I don't want. I, I I want to, but I also don't want to. I'm scared of heights. I did it. 
It was well, fun. Good job. It was really fun. Want a cookie? Actually, I do. I would love a cookie right now. <laughs> a cookie? Yeah. I mean, this cookie's outside. Yeah, I need to go get a cookie. I can, I can get you a cookie. Um, anyways, we're going to start wrapping it up. Thank yes. you so much for joining us. No, thank you for having me here. On, on this episode. It's been good seeing you. Please, everybody, if you have a chance, go, go check out Amber's music on YouTube or Spotify or Apple Music. Yes, right? everything. And uh, she's also on tour. Anything you want to say to your fans? Um, I love you guys. Thank you guys so much. And um, again, uh, take care of yourselves physically and mentally. Um, know that you are not alone and that you are loved. All right. Well, thank you so much. Have a great day, week, day. night, whatever, wherever yes. you are. Please go ahead and subscribe to The Dive Studios uh, on YouTube. You can see the full video of this interview at some point on that channel. Also, you can subscribe to the podcast on Spotify mm -hmm. and uh, yes, go to yes. Apple Podcast. And I beg of you, please leave us a rate and review. It'll be my Valentine's Day gift because I'm alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And you'll go check out so Eric dramatic. on tour too. I'm yes. on tour. Eric's on tour. Everybody's on tour. Just We're on tour. We'll see you on the road, guys. Yes. Meow, meow. Bye-bye. Meow. Love you. Hey guys, did you guys like that video? Then make sure you guys subscribe to Dive Studios YouTube channel and put your notifications on because we got a lot more great content coming your way. Look at this video. See? Wow. Wow. And this, and this is great too. Enjoy.